<laughs> we uh, send those emails out not knowing what I'm talking about. And we made it. It's always a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter. <laughs> I'm happy to do it. It's a little warm out, but as long as I'm in the air condition, I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, if you can find a tree to give you some shade. Remind me the whole time he's gonna stare at Daniel. I'm just gonna stare at Daniel the whole time. No matter what. <laughs> Yeah. 
Here's everything I wrote down. I don't know if it all makes sense. <laughs> don't worry. I paid for it. <laughs> that was great. No, it'll be good. I think we just freed up two million MFA. So I need to try to use that. Fine. Just enough to get. They're just going to buy back in this month. Probably down to six million. Yeah, everyone's like, fine. Oh, yeah? That's a nice hope. I feel good about it.
Hello. Let's call this meeting to order of the Bond Advisory Committee. Um, in your packets, today, I hope everyone got their packets, uh, from our May 6, 2009 meeting minutes. Any questions about those? Comments? A motion? Motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, moving along. Item 3A. Hello, my name is Daniel Wynn. I am pleased to present item 3A. This is for uh, project TC0505. This is for phase two of the school zone flasher upgrades uh, citywide and all, all wards. We're looking for $513,000 in 2007 geo bond uh, streets unlisted funds for this. Uh, previously, phase one was recommended for approval from the, the committee here in December of 2018. Currently, the, our streets crews are out there trying to get these implemented into the uh, school zones to, uh, to allow them to uh, work a little more efficiently. What this uh, upgrade is doing is allowing uh, two-way communication between the flasher system and our uh, advanced traffic management system so that they can uh, more efficiently monitor when the school zones are going, when they aren't going, and help traffic move a little easier. The, the current system is a paging system. It's a one-way system that uh, someone pushes the button and then someone else has to go out and drive to make sure that it actually went on. Yeah, if this is phase two, how many more signals are out there that need to be upgraded? I, I'm not positive on the, the amount of signals. I know that there's about 200 modems that they'll be ordering for this, and I'm not positive exactly how many signals, uh, locations they'll actually be affecting. I can look that information up if you'd like me to and get back to you. I'm just, I'm just curious if we're going to, uh, how many more phases, you know, that's all, you know. Yeah. I know that we kind of cash flow this through smartly, but. Sure. I have not heard that there's any more phases. As far as my knowledge is, this would be the last phase to complete all the school systems. Okay. Yeah. If I find out anything otherwise, I'll let you guys know. Any other questions? And. Motion. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, on to informational items. Uh, I would be going over the GEO bond executive summary. Uh, in the month of May, we had a spend, uh, expenditures of $12,328,414. Uh, the fiscal year to date, uh, $82,647,755. Uh, the 12-month average monthly expenditure is, uh, is at $8,135,320. And the total expenditures for the rolling 12-month is 
$623,843. And in the sale year for 2016, we have already met the 85% requirement by the IRS. That's it for the GeoBond Executive Summary. Any questions? Item B, traffic so signal poll and master arm informational. Yes, sir. At, at the May 2019 meeting, uh, we brought the item for TC0501 for $500,000 for traffic signal poles and mast arms. Uh, what this would do is create an attic stock for the city uh, so that we can more efficiently get the projects uh, in place and uh, moving traffic properly. Currently, we have almost a 20-week lead time with poles, and so this would be our way of trying to mitigate that to try to be a little more strategic on how we do polls. Uh, at the May 2019 meeting, Ms. Douglas had some concerns on how we were uh, approaching the project and uh, wanted to just look into it a little bit further. Since that meeting, we did meet with Ms. Douglas and uh, got concurrence from her that we should move forward. And with that, we went, took this to the May 21st, uh, 2019 City Council meeting for their approval. It was approved. Walker Corridor? Sure. On uh, item 4C, I wanted to give an update on the Walker Corridor. This was a uh, product that was recommended uh, by the Bond Advisory Committee in March of 2019. This is in wards 4, 5, and 6. Uh, the corridor is five and a half miles, starting from uh, I-40 and going south to 104th Street. This will be a resurfacing project along with uh, uh, addressing the curb and gutter and sidewalks along the corridor. I wanted to kind of talk about where we are right now and, and the next steps we have. Uh, currently, and if you guys have driven down Walker, you've probably seen a lot of work going on with the concrete crews. We did utilize uh, MTZ on our unit price contract to get out there. Uh, on They started March 18th, 2019, and from that point until July 15th when they should be completed, they'll be uh, putting in about $1.5 million worth of work, which to put in perspective, uh, that's right around $12,500 per day of production. Our usual production rate for concrete in this type of facility is around $7,000 a day. So we're getting a lot more production out of this work, and a lot of that's because of the corridor, you know, having five and a half miles that they can address and they know they can dedicate crews to it. Uh, and the other is a kind of a implicit incentive that they have that we aren't actually paying them money, but any work they didn't complete by July 15th, they don't get. They will go to another contractor. So they, they had a really big incentive just to try to address. And so they really did do a great job in, in addressing that. Uh, we do have a few pictures here of, of showing some of the differences. This is at 27th Street looking north. You can kind of see that the, the sidewalk did get uh, widened out. It ate up a little bit of that gutter area that, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people were trying to park in, which ended up blocking a little bit of the lane there as well. So. We, we widened out that sidewalk, made it more ADA accessible, and, and cleaned up the area quite a bit. Uh, we also have been addressing some of the drives into the side streets there. Here you can see, and, and you, it might be a little shady, so it's a little hard to see, but there was ponding water that sat at some of these intersections. Uh, with the new work, we've regraded that and allowed the water to flow more efficiently into the storm sewer system to not only you know have a better driving experience, but also will and, and, and long allow the life of the pavement to last longer. There's words there. All right, the next uh, is the asphalt work. So after the concrete work is completed, and like, as I said, July 15th, the uh, concrete work should be completed, we will be uh, starting the asphalt work. On uh, May 8th, we opened bids for the asphalt work, and we used the A plus B bidding I I item. Now, that is something that was recommended to Public Works by the City Auditor, something that will help kind of control project timeframes uh, and kind of mitigate the impact to residents as they go through these work zones. Uh, and just to kind of give a, a little brief overview on what A plus B bidding is, because it's kind of an innovative bidding solution. Uh, what it is, is the A bid is the normal bid price of items. That's, you know, you know $1,000 per ton of asphalt, things like that, what a normal contractor's bid. The B bid, though, is the time that the contractor thinks it will take them to do it. Uh, and so that's where we get the ability to let contractors that have a little more capacity or, or have this more in their wheelhouse can maybe bid that number down and get a lower bid because the B bid is the number of days times a, a number that we came up with based on factors like the, the uh, user cost uh, to about $10,000 a day. So with that, the A bid plus the B bid came, comes up with the low, cost, low, low bidder. 
in this case, we also did an incentive, disincentive, and in general, as you do A plus B bids, you want to make sure that the contractor is not just telling you they can get it done in 80 days. You want to have a little bit of teeth in it. So as an incentive, we allowed them $10,000 a day as well, up to 20 days for any day they completed ahead of their B time. And on the other side, we also have a $10,000 a day disincentive for every day after their B time with no maximum. So it will really incentivize the contractors to make sure to get out there, get this done, and get finished, and hopefully reduce the impact to the residents. Except when we have torrential rain like we've had this year. Well, the one nice thing about this is with that incentive, it went to T.J. Campbell, and the asphalt work was bid at a B bid of 80 days, so they could conceivably complete it in 60 days to get full incentive. This allows a production rate of around $45,000 to $60,000 a day. Our usual production rate for asphalt, we're looking usually around $20,000 a day. So this is, again, a combination of the economy of scale having a longer corridor, but also the incentive really is going to push people to try to get things done. And now to address your concern on that or your thoughts on that, is that the incentive does not allow any weather days. It doesn't allow weekends. It is a straight 80 days, including all calendar days. So this is, it's. That's a hell of a contract then. Yeah. The one thing that we allow is that in emergency declarations, if a tornado goes straight down Walker, we will reduce the disincentive, but we will not allow them to get more incentive. Does the city have quality control people that are observing the work? Sure. Yes, sir, we do. So we have two different methods usually. Field services, how public works, goes out there. They have inspectors that do our normal inspection. On this one, because we recognize that it's kind of a special project, we want to make sure to have our eyes on it a little bit more. We've actually engaged a consultant firm to do a little more close inspection to go out there. We also have testing firms that go out on every project and work with the contractors to test materials to make sure they're up to our specifications. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks. Is there any other new business for the committee? Any items from the committee members? And do any citizens wish to be heard? And with that, I'd entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? All right. See you all next time.